Built out of a commitment and service, in 1891, the Reverend Daniel Jenkins, pastor of a small African-American church in Charleston, South Carolina, stumbled on a group of four black youths on the edge of town. Their plight had special meaning to Jenkins because he himself had been orphaned at a young age. He promised to rid the city of its roaming wild children. The city of Charleston allows Reverend Jenkins to use an abandoned warehouse next to the prison on the waterfront. With their agreement and a small stipend of $100, the Reverend Daniel Jenkins Orphanage was born. This film represents a new beginning for the 100 plus year history and tradition of this proud institution. The Jenkins Institute for Children is paving the way into the 21st century by continuing to provide service to a new generation of the young people and the Charleston community it serves. Reverend Jenkins was a man that had a dream, and he fulfilled that dream. The Jenkins Orphanage is one of the, the great stories of Charleston history. Yeah, Reverend Jenkins, basically I see him as a, a self-made man. Um, he, he was born into slavery sometime in the 1860s, it's not exactly clear when, but sometime during the Civil War. Um, and ra was raised during the years of Reconstruction. So he worked in agriculture. Um, he worked as a farmer throughout his teens and into his early 20s. It's incredible to me to be the executive director at this point in time uh, to carry that history on. And in going back, investigating and, and researching what he did in the 1800 is just overwhelming to me. To raise money, Reverend Jenkins solicited a few battered horns and hand-me-down uniforms in the 1890s and created the Jenkins Orphanage Band, which continued for nearly 50 years. The Jenkins Bands were a familiar sight on the streets of Charleston. Reverend Jenkins' vision to start the Orphanage Band is being recognized by many scholars and jazz historians as making a major contribution to the evolution of jazz music. Through their travels in the States and Europe, it is well documented that the bands popularized jazz in the North and abroad by touring the East Coast and Europe into the 1930s. It began, the roots of what came out of Jenkins with regard to jazz uh, came out of traditions started before there was a word called jazz or this music that we now, known, now know as jazz uh, was untitled. Uh, in today's uh, parlance, uh, some of the musics that went on before the word came into usage, which was the 1920s, uh, what the Jenkins and some other early players did uh, would now be called uh, jazz precursors or antecedents, uh, rags, blues, that kind of thing, but for my money, it's jazz. Charleston is a cradle of jazz. The, the, the sounds and the, and the tones and the, and the beat and the, and the rhythm, uh, the, the, the musical conversation that goes on in jazz comes from the African-American experience in the low country. Uh, without any question. I think that the Jenkins Orphanage and the um, Jenkins Orphanage Band and Reverend Daniel Jenkins' story um, are very important for um, people to understand today um, because he is coming out of these difficult circumstances but he's making it work and he's giving better opportunities to um, the surrounding community and, and eventually becomes a much larger community that he is creating um, right here in Charleston. As I'm told Count Basie Band had Freddie Green, who was an institution within itself. And Freddie came through that orphanage. Um, there were many musicians that came through. Cat Anderson came through Charleston from the orphanage band. In Reverend Jenkins's genius, the uh, teaching of music 
uh, at Jenkins, which led to this um, uh, proclivity for jazz music by some of these children. I think it could legitimately said that Jenkins contributed to the roots of what we now call jazz, and by extension, the roots of American culture. From its early beginnings, founded in 1891, the Jenkins Institute for Children, as it is now known, has played an integral part of the Charleston community. From its rise to prominence due to the sharp ability of Reverend Daniel Joseph Jenkins, who served as its president for 45 years. Through Reverend Jenkins' insight, determination, and support from the community, he co-currently balanced several enterprises. Alongside the orphanage, he also starts up a print shop and has one of the only um, black newspapers coming out of Charleston at that time called the Charleston Messenger, which runs for 53 years. It's one of the longest run black newspapers in South Carolina. Um, and it's a very popular newspaper that's read throughout the East Coast and reprinted in lots of newspapers, mostly black newspapers along the East Coast. Um, and also alongside that print shop, he has um, a cobbler shop. So his children are um, working on shoes. They have a blacksmith shop. They're cutting wood out at the farms as well and selling lumber to people in the city or in the country. And he runs just a lot of different shops um, next to the orphanage. Well, one of the things that I thought was funny and interesting was that when people brought their children there to the orphanage or wherever he got them from, he used to rub their heads. And from that, he could tell where he was going to put that child, whether that child would take up printing or whether he or she would play an instrument and what instrument or whatever type of in, uh, education he was going to give that child. He used to, he would get the knowledge from the rubbing of the head. I don't know how. <laughs> you know, when you, when you hear Reverend Jenkins' story, you know, you, you hear the story of Father Divine in, you know, in Philadelphia, you know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in Chicago, you know, Daddy Grace somewhere else. You know, I mean, the, the same level of leadership. Uh, to raise the money, um, he, he had to uh, motivate people. He, they, he was the Pied Piper. This man, over a century ago, right out of slavery, reconstruction, dealing with Jim Crowism and segregation and all the other kinds of things that are, were against him, was able to have an institution that is going on continuously to this moment.